Today I'll be making a pressing pad for a Zenith or Alpine trimmer. Um, before you start, I would like to mark the center of my plate. Uh, this one I took a file and made a couple strokes, or you can just use a sharpie, just somehow to where you know where center is. And the thing to remember about wood and cardboard is your total thickness has got to be at least one and three sixteenths of an inch. Um, any thinner will give you problems. If you use four sheets of cardboard with the wood that we have, it should turn out just fine. Um, now we'll get into measuring the pad. I will be making a seven and nine sixteenths by five and a quarter inch pad. That is our most popular size, so that is what I'll be doing. Okay, first thing you need to do when you start is uh, mount your plate to the block of wood. Um, I used to cut out the wood first, then mount the plate to it, but whenever I do that, uh, my plate would always end up moving a little bit. So I found out if I mark my, uh, mount my plate first, uh, none of my lines move. So I'll mark the bolt holes. Um, most of your, all your measurements when doing the block of wood will be to where the front knife is going to land. So I have four marks on my block of wood. I will take my, take my drill bit and aim for the center of each of the holes. Put out about eighth of an inch. Doesn't have to be real deep. So I keep dust out of the way so you can see where your tip is. Okay. I might go a little deeper with this one. There we go. After we have that hole done, we'll go to the bit to go all the way through. For this, I will slide it to the edge of the table because I will be drilling all the way through on these. Now we will put our T-nuts in. I always use a bolt just to drive them in place. Now you should be able to put your plate on. And all four screws should line up. If you use the right holes. Okay, so 
all four screws line up, it doesn't really matter. It's a little bit off square. It doesn't really matter because we're going to measure off of the plate. Going to start out. The front knife is going to cut right about here. We have our center marked. Half of seven and nine sixteenths, which is going to be our width, will be about three and three quarters. So you can take your square, go on three and three quarters. But we want to stay a little bit smaller than that because we want to make sure we don't hit the wood with the knives. Flip her over, do the same thing. Three and three quarters, and go just a little bit smaller than that. Okay. Then we need to do the five and a quarter. Same thing here. The front knife is going to hit here. So if we put down five and a quarter, that would be the back edge. But since we want to add a little leeway, we're going about an um, eighth of an inch. We'll draw our line. We'll draw the line here with the front knife. Trace out our cutout. And remove our plate, extend our lines, and we will be ready to cut. piece of wood has a little bit of damage in the corner that should not affect it. It will be on the top side. And we are ready to cut it out. To cut this out I'm going to use a jigsaw. Make sure you extend it out past the edge of your table. Doesn't really matter which one you cut first. Just try to stay on the line the best you can. And it's important to remember, do not put your fingers under the board where you're cutting. For your center cutout, you're going to just cut one leg or cut both legs and then you have to go at an angle to actually get into the corners. now have a block of wood for a 7 9 16 by 5 and a quarter inch pad. Okay, the last one I cut out, I cut out using a jigsaw. 
I prefer to use a bandsaw when I have one available. You get a much nicer cut. And it's actually, in my opinion, it's a little bit safer because your fingers are not under the board. You don't have board moving around on you. So I'll cut this one out using the bandsaw. It is the same principle when it comes to cutting out the center. Uh, you'll cut one, cut the other, then go in at an angle to clean up your corners. Uh, the only issue with the bandsaw is do, if you're going to back up after a cut, if you need to back out, turn the motor off. Otherwise, you'll pull the blade off the rollers inside. So it's kind of a one direction, push only. Uh, you can turn to a degree and do angles, but if you need to come backwards, make sure you turn the motor off first. cut out is ready for the cardboard. <laughs> 